that's the news of today. It's about the chip. Let me start on that. I'm going to be planting everybody. Go take the mark of the beast. And of course, it's being promoted as a convenience. Everything's taking breaks in the world's convenience. He presents, he presents things to the world many times. Through faith, 
and to salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time of the expression game. Last time. I don't know if I've said it to you before. Probably have. But all the stories and the adventures in the Old Testament regrets. Keep your finger in. Turn to First Corinthians. Verses covered the exodus of the children of Israel from Egypt and their salvation and their cloud around the sea and their right down to their overthrow and orders. Verse 5. So if many of them, God is not well pleased. God has buzzwords throughout the Bible. Full of words. Did he include you? Well, please. First time this word is mentioned was with, with Enoch. It says Enoch lived 365 years, and he was not. So for God took him. He's the first, the first one to be raptured. He's the type of the rapture. This is but he had this testimony for God took him. But he praised God. Then in Hebrews chapter 11, it says, Without faith, <coughs> it's what? Impossible to praise God. So it opens up for Enoch. Enoch had faith. And his faith pleased God, and God took him on the basis of his faith. Okay? So for the rest of now. Now these things were our examples. What things? Everything, everything they experienced from the Exodus to their overthrow. Okay? Our examples to the intent we should not lust after every things, as they also lusted. You wonder what people can lust after. In the wilderness, where there's no city, none of the attractions that cities bring. I'll tell you, Satan creates things. Where you're at, it doesn't matter. Neither be idolaters, as were some of them, as written. The people sat down to eat, to drink, rose up to play. Sounds like. Good time. How many like good times? All hands, all hands should be up. Because y'all do. Right? But the good times took them out. I was going to take me out. And I was, it's clear for me. If they come along accidentally, cool. <laughs> They don't. I'm not gonna go looking for them. I try to create them because they're not in the menu. Verse 11. Now all these things happen to them for in samples, and they are written for our admonition upon whom the ends of the world are come. You might have a, a margin translation. Ends of the age. He's talking about things in the Old Testament written for our example, so he's talking about the New Testament, specifically the New Testament church. And the end of the New Testament church age 
So they was, they were seeing church. And the end of the age of little sin church is called in the Bible the last time. Okay? Last time. Most of what's written on final prophecy regarding the church is all centered upon this last time of the little sin church age. The end of that age should have ended in 1997. It's been extended now. All these scriptures are talking about that period of time from 97 into right now. It's not a long period of time. Let me consider the whole history of the church has gone from 31 AD so far to 2012. But God focuses on how many years now? Fifteen years is a drop in the bucket compared to. But the things he's writing to us, though, involve that 15-year period. It's not going to go much longer at all. Trust me. Too many things are coming up. That nothing else is going to make 2013 interesting yet. For sure. So it's all written to save this last church age. Got everything written before us for us. So there's no reason why we shouldn't make it. Follow me? Yeah. I'll go back to Peter again. <laughs> Who are kept by the power of God through faith of this salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time, wherein you get great and rejoice, though now for a season, if need be. You are in heaviness. The manifold temptations. Kiss a phrase if need be. That tells me it need not be. Yeah. Well, how do you make it need not be? You take the advice of Jesus to the Laodicean church and he said, I count you to buy gold of me. <laughs> buy the gold and this need not be. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's easier. They say in the world, drinkers pick your own poison. It's a little better to get drunk, really easier to get drunk, more pleasure to get drunk on your own stuff. On the drink you like. That's why somebody's buying the drinks, they're buying a certain body, I mean, I like that, you know, so you go along with it. It's better to go through a trial if you fight and ask him for it, as opposed to him giving you one because you need it, need be. Most things you say get prayed up. Let's change the expression. You get trialed up. <laughs> Don't get trialed up. And this is the trial period. I've said many times to you. It hasn't changed any. Sam? As you practice, so when you play. You practice sloppy, you're going to play sloppy. Professional teams play as good as they practice. The teams that practice hard, take more serious, have high work ethics, they play better. They're just better teams. The teams that don't, don't. And what God has given us is an extra long practice session. And during the practice session, we're given trials, and then those trials gives the option to lean to him or the world. Over and over and over again. Going to him, it's my faith. Going to the world is a choice. Seemingly quick results. And more.
more in line with what we designed. Let Satan tell you even the garden. The tree to be desired to make one wise. That's the same Satan, that's why we're told in John, to love not the world. That's pretty straightforward. You should be at the point by now you hate the world. At least understand that this world has nothing to give me at all. But grief. Disguised as pleasure. A headache just, just disguised as a good time. Think back, what has the world ever given you that lasted? Nothing. Nothing. If you've been thinking manufactured, you buy, nothing lasts. She says, this, is the, this world, the past of this world, passes away. But Satan, being a fan of man, he's going to keep on offering up. Lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, pride of life, that's what, that's, that's what he does. And he's good at it. And our trial is to say no to all of them. To understand how he uses them, how he presents them, and be able to use them in a reserved manner, but not immerse himself in them. Constantly keep in mind. <coughs> That we are pilgrims, strangers, sojourners. All these words imply passing through. Mm -hmm. I'm passing through. I get from the world the necessities of life, the things I need, and that's it. I'm not going to keep going to the same store to get more and more and more of what I already have. I go to stores of the world to get what I need from the world and move on. I should not be the world's best customer in anything. That's right. Amen. Amen. That's right. Passing through. I think I used the illustration many times about going to 7-Eleven and the nationality that works for most 7-Elevens, they have their turbans on and they're dressed, and they don't eat the 7-Eleven food, they have their own food, right? you know? They talk in their own language when, you know, sometimes when you're, when you're in the store, which I think is kind of rude, but they do that. Why? So, strangers, soldiers, they may, they may be U.S. citizens, but they ain't trying to blend in. <laughs> we can take an example from that, in that we shouldn't be trying to blend in. We should stick like a sore a thumb in this world. I imagine Jesus stuck, you know, he stood out. He was different. And those who followed him stood out. That's why they're always being accused by the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Why did you and your disciples do this and so on and so on and so, so forth all the time? That only happens when you are walking with him and you're going to stand out and you're going to bear his reproach. That's the good time the Lord gave to us Easter. You follow him. And following him, following him, there's a stigma with it. And we try to avoid the stigma, which is a trial. I bet the Peter again. That the trial of your faith being much more precious than of gold that perishes. Well. Most folks are after the gold, let's face it. It's not the gold gold, the good life. Yeah. Right? Yeah. We all want it. Yeah. But we have to realize it's not down here. Yeah. At all. Yeah. The good life is over there. Yeah. And he has abundance of it. But down here is not going to be a good life. If in this world only we have hope in Christ Jesus, we are all men most miserable. Why? Because Christians in this side of the cross is a losing situation. You lose. We should expect it. You come up short, you should get the bad, the, the raw deal most of the time. Cause you're in the world. But what keeps you driving with all the bad things going against you is where you're going. The wilderness was no fun. Nobody wanted to stay in the wilderness. 
but they didn't let the wilderness prepare them for Canaan. They come to the wilderness and eat and drink and rise up to play and have a part in the wilderness in this ain't that way. It's the wilderness. It's rough here. It's tough. That's what Mark says. Endure hardness as a good soldier. Why? Because that's the guy's passing out. Hardness. And expect you to make a choice for him through all of it. Without a second thought. It's like this should be automatic. First and only option. Says Sunday quickly. Antichrist. Is a substitute deliverer. He has what you need. It's temporary. It'll result in going to hell. It'll take away from God. It'll pull faith out of your life, but he can deliver. But he's a substitute. He substitutes him. You can't have both of them, because that's what, in our church age, is called lukewarm. I want God and my convenience and the world I need. It. It'll work. It's not gonna work. You brought out all your eggs in one basket and put all your trust and hope in Him and go with it. Which the way God's been talking to us, in understanding who Jesus is, there should be no other choice. It should be firmly fixed in our minds that he's in. He's got all the solutions. He has all the answers. He can deal. He can deliver. Only problem with him is they may not do it when I want it. But you understand that this is the one of time. This is the one who made the world. Who put things in motion. Because who put these planets, these great suns and things in an orbit. And galaxies controls all that kind of stuff. So he must know about controlling things. Let him control me. Even though somebody doesn't have no idea where he's going or where I am. But he, his whole work to the works of the Lord, the ways of the Lord, and Psalm says, That's fine. are perfect. He's got the perfect solution. Problem is, you'll never figure it out. That's why he's been real simple before he says, Follow me. Why? Because too much to tell you, it's too much to explain to you. You know, it's like somebody, when you're driving, and somebody asks for directions, and you say, well, uh, look, follow me. Why do you do that? It's easier for them and me. I'm trying to tell you, we're going to go on these streets here, and make a right here, and they get in the freeway, and then you're going to Follow me. And nothing's worse than telling somebody to follow you who's lost, who doesn't. Yeah. <laughs> you got to keep stoning on your rear view, and what are they doing? Why does their car go as fast as mine? <laughs> All cars go a certain speed. <laughs> right? That's about every car would do 100 miles an hour. That should be going that fast. <laughs> but they should really keep up. But I wonder why don't they keep up? Because they got other plans. Mm -hmm. Following you the way you're going to be followed is not the way they drive. So I'll be lost. Driving my way as opposed to following you and where I'm going. Wow. That's what we do. We take a chance and we lost. And we'll hold God up. And he says, walk in the light while you have the light. So he's saying, I'm, I'm moving on. My word is progressive. And you start to sit back there and deliver it over the light, he said, you're in the dark. You have no idea where you're going. Said, Just follow me. I got the headlights. All right. I got the lights. <laughs> Follow me another way. Follow me. Easy. My yoke is easy. easy. What makes it hard? Us. Us. I didn't finish. Corinthians. He says anything left here. Chapter 1. Yeah, let's finish verse 7. That the power of your faith, being much more precious than of gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found into praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. That's all I want. I want his praise and his honor and his glory when he appears. He says, here's the price. If 
required by us. So we signed up for it. Ain't that other man? Is that? He heard a trick about that one. He said, I'm going to speak out of my mouth. Minister said to me, Lord, Lord, so on and so forth. He said, I'm going to speak out of my mouth. He said, I told you, it's all me or nothing. The scripture said, any man that hateth not his mother, father, sister, brother, so on and so forth. Some commentators say it doesn't mean to hatred other people, the sister and brother, whatever. It means to love them less than him. He wants it all. I want you to love me more than your mother, than your father, than your baby, than your friends, all of them, and your own self. Or he said, or you can't be my disciple. That's his demand. And that's how I'm going to shake this church out. He can, say, yeah, I said it before. he can delay his coming long enough for us to be lost. Mm -hmm. Everybody starts saying, where's the promise of his coming? Mm -hmm. Here we go, get another rapture thing. Coming up. And I didn't get excited about it. For fear of the fact that it may not happen. What are you doing? I'm supposed to be following him. If it doesn't happen, it'll be all right. Yes, yes. It shouldn't take weeks and months to get over it. Amen. It didn't happen, you should get over that same day. Amen. It didn't happen. That's right. I wish God said, follow him. That's right. The plan was to change one bit. That's right. He said, he that shall come, will come, will not tarry. So I got to trust him. Yes. Either I believe his word or I don't. Yes. It's just that simple. I believe him or I don't believe I believe all of his word, all the prophets are written, or I just believe some of them. I believe the parts that make sense to me. I believe the, I believe the parts that I understand. I believe the parts that are logical. They go off my human, my human nature and my human reasoning. I believe those. That stuff, you know, Lord, you know, Lord, help me. Why should he help you? How can he help you? You're saying, Lord, I don't have faith to help me. And he said, without faith, it's impossible to please me. Now, who's going to give? He's not going to help you. There's some situation people ask to pray for them. Can't. Because by now, we should have faith. Period. Whatever comes up, he says, here's our option. Got bad news today. The bad news hammer. He's already decided before you complain and worry about all the kind of stuff and go through all the change you go through. He's already settled that, well, he knows about this. He was here with me and heard this conversation. Just like I did. Now I can go ahead and bolster up and say, well, he's able. You gotta admire the, the, the Hebrew boys, the three Hebrew boys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They said, Oh, King of our God doesn't deliver us, he's able. He said, That's right. And they did what then? Went to the furnace. Yes. Went to the fire trial, knowing he's able. Yes. Does he have to deliver? No. Not down here, he doesn't. He doesn't have to do it. He said, I'm okay, you're gonna cash in over there. Over here, may not. What are you gonna do? Follow me? Give it, the Lord knows, like, this has been a long time, and so what? Yeah. John the Baptist had a straight. He was in jail. So when he was in jail, he heard in prison the works of Jesus. <laughs> you know what? Somebody's reporting to John the Baptist. Every carnal work Jesus did. Turn the water to wine at the wedding was a carnal work. Just being at the wedding, really. He was accused of being a wine giver and a friend of publicans and sinners. He was a man of sorrows, but he went to the events and mingled with people to save him. And the, what got back to John the Baptist was all the negative things. But God gave John the credit. John said, Art thou he that should come, or do we look for another? He didn't lose his faith. He died, but the point about it is that I'm not going to give up. Right. You're the Messiah or not? Right. You know the rest of the story. Jesus told the guys who came asking their questions, just follow me. It's in that same hour, he cured many of their sicknesses. He opened the blind eyes, he made the lame walk, so forth, so forth. And he said, now go back and tell John the things you saw and heard. And blessed is he who ever so ever is not offended in me. He can offend you if he wants to. 
He's been real kind to us. Yes. yes. But, you know, he's, 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 he's God. He has a right to call the shots. But if you give yourself to him, then he owns you. It's just that simple. And he tells you what to do. So the thing about it is that he has all the solutions. He's a fix-it man. He says, cast your cares upon me, for your care is my constant concern. Song that they're working so on. Oh, what needless, oh, what pain we often suffer, something like that. Oh, what needless pain we bear. All because God carry everything to Him in prayer. You get the bad news, stick it in. You, you, you take it in before you even, even, even leave where you get the bad news from. So, okay, Lord. Here we go again. Here we go. And note that when you say, here we go, it is at that point, right then, okay. Because he's God. Amen. Amen. He can do anything. Why well, don't you do anything right now? Because he's trying to take your faith and make it protect from It's not about him. It's about you. He don't need faith. So Jesus is the first goer of faith. He's accomplished it. By faith, it says the world's is, the world's is a frame. God spoke it way back then. He's got the faith. Now it's for you. So what does he do? Sometimes he holds up on it. Why well, I need this right now, Lord. He's like, I don't know. Probably smiling to himself saying, you have no idea what right now is. <laughs> Here we go. Here we go. It's like your kids are playing. They come to you with school supplies, you know. We have to have this tomorrow. Or I can't go to school. I said, I don't know what teacher told you that. <laughs> <laughs> but you're not going to have it tomorrow, and you will be in school. <laughs> Mm -hmm. It's not going to be, you're not going to have your full gym outfit tomorrow. <laughs> I'll go talk to the teacher. Mm -hmm. I never did. She <laughs> said, what his name was, she said, my children, I got four children. And everybody can't have a gym at one time. But they will have it. Meantime, they're going to let them play their socks. Mm -hmm. It's okay. There's a way around everything. He's a way maker. Yes. Take it to him. Yes, yes. Where's children? Let him work it out. Yes. That's right. It's his problem. When you get a problem, it's not yours, it's his. You can make it yours, but let it be his. That's what he wants it to be. I want to help God out. I'm, I'm carry with him. Go oh, ahead. <laughs> Just don't call me. <laughs> you and God got work, y'all got a deal? Carry on. <laughs> and you carry him? <laughs> that old song is saying, Church, take your burden to the Lord mm -hmm. and leave him there. Mm -hmm. When you get a big load, you dump on him. When you dump on him, forget about him. You don't dump on him, it's going to keep on worrying. You give it to him. It's not yours anymore. You gave it away. Yeah. And here. You take this. And he will. He's waiting for you to do that. Mm -hmm. He went for doing it and went for you to trust him completely. Right. So God take it. Then he takes it and makes it look like it makes him think that he's not taking it. Once you give it to him, he's taking it. It's his. Right. But he'll make you, he'll, he'll put you through some changes. Right. You come back to the way no more. So you start working on things. I did. Playing big CD. I was going come through yet. This master of time is late for me. He's not aware of what I'm going through. Maybe I did, maybe I did explain to him carefully. Maybe I left out some details that he should know about in this situation. He knew about it before you got the news. He created it. He knew about your, about your physical condition and the doctor before you heard it. Why? Because he put it in action. He said, I'm going to have a doctor available for him to go to and see who they're going to trust. Mm -hmm. How are they going to come out of it? Are they going to come out of it? Walking up like that, or they going to come out of it? Oh, no! He asked those guys in the road to Miz. He said, why are you sad? He read him, Peter, if need be. Those 10 days come up. 
speaking, Captain One, what do you mind? <laughs> Certain parts of the trip you really, you really like. I heard about driving to New York all the time. This starts getting exciting in New Jersey, huh, Rose? <laughs> the, the, the emotions and everything, the excitement starts rising. You didn't see one building yet. You're driving through the country, New Jersey, and filling New York. By the time you get you know, near the bridge, you can't see yet. Everybody, the first time we were going to the freeway, everybody's gone over 90. And the highway patrol sitting in the middle lane at night time, he just flashed his light. Just all you know, chase nobody. Just a little flash, like, you know, slow down. Nobody slows down. <laughs> and the tension and excitement just keeps on mounting and mounting and mounting. You come on one great big crest finally, and then you see the whole city. It's like, wow. And you feel it. Look at the stuff's gonna happen. I mean, look at the opportunities God has. Whatever comes over is wrong with you, it's an opportunity for God. Right. And he gives them over and over and over and over and a whole bunch of them. Why? To get you ready for one stretch. Mm -hmm. Ten days. Mm -hmm. How are you playing? How are you practicing? Aaron Tucker says, I got you to buy gold of me. Try. You can debate this. I don't mind. It's a man. Frank says, go try to buy it. To me, implies that she's already possessed the gold before the fire comes. Mm -hmm. Peter talks about, there's more speaking from Peter, chapter 4. Mm -hmm. Verse 12. Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened unto you, but you rejoice inasmuch as you are partakers of Christ's sufferings. What caused you most grief? The world. He said, I partake of his sufferings. And I can identify with him. Paul says, that I might know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings. That's like you can know, like know Jesus. You will never know him eating and drinking get him to play. You never know him. He'll say, I never knew him. But when you start embracing the fellowship and the suffering of being in this world and having the choice of the world delivers or him, that's suffering. The world has a pill. Here, take this, you'll be fine. God don't give out pills. But you'll be better. Much better. Because he's not going to just treat your symptom or your cause you think you have. He's going to treat all of you. Oh. Take a chance. Rejoice as much as you are partakers of Christ's sufferings. That when his glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. I don't want to meet Jesus afraid. I don't want the next day to come upon me and I'm fearful. I don't want to face a 10 day trial and not think I may not make it. Because I haven't made it to a trial yet. I don't come to that point and say, man, I'm going through. Because yeah. right, I've been going through. It's no new thing. He's trying to teach you another, another level of faith. But at that point, you're at the top level. You're at the top of your faith game. In fact, you hope when something comes down that will require your faith, and you sit back and say, okay, I got this one, Lord. I mean, to me, the biggest riddle God ever threw my way was the back of two. He that shall come, will come, will not tarry. Don't, don't, don't tarry, wait for it. That was more devil talk and riddle. I said, how's God going to explain this? How long taking how, how long take to explain that? Years. But I was excited. I can't wait. So he's, got, he's, got to, he's got to unravel with this mystery. You told me last night, I said, remember the mystery I gave him back? I said, yeah. I said, well, life's going to be full, full of a whole lot more of them, but I will unsolve the riddle. Follow me. Thank you, Lord. Follow me. There's some life going to have answers for him. A whole bunch of questions. He said, I got the answers. Trust me. How do you, <coughs> you trust me in? Because you rest. A 
to each other. You have me, you have somebody, and they say, yeah, I got that. What do you do at that moment? You rest. Amen. It may be delivered to you, but at that moment, you rest. That's what God wants. Give it to me and rest. Let it go. But you know what I'm going through? You ain't got to. You ain't got to. God has put us all on a different trip. You guys know that? Yeah. This is the one that talks about snowflakes and fingerprints and eye prints. He is not a not single one of you have the same path. There's no two people in the entire body of Christ on the same road. That's why you can't let us stay Christianity because everybody's done something different. What's okay for you ain't for me. He's working on yours. There's only one common denominator for everybody, and that's faith in his word. That's the equal, that's the, 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 the common denominator. We all have that. But the other part is different. I can't give you solution any time. Because I'm out there. I don't know about my own. But I've learned to trust his word. And he's got to work it out. That I know. Why? Because it's happened too many times. And it never happened until I had to put all my trust in him and say, okay, you got this. You always have to have a, 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 a don't care attitude. You know, I don't care if it floods or not. My mother said, I don't, I don't care if school keeps or not. I, mean, I, I don't know what that means. Yeah. It's like you get to the point where you come in yourself. The man the pig died, this prodigal son, he's about to eat the, the, the husk with the, with the pig, and it says, and when he came to himself, <coughs> and God's to bring it to yourself sometimes. To yourself realizing that I can't do nothing. Or I'm in a mess, or I'm in a pig pen. I can deliver myself. And so when you come to yourself, it's okay now. You ready? It's not. We'll get you out of this. Yeah. I'll take you to another one. Yeah, yeah. You follow me, okay? And everything's gets down. We're, we're feeling good because life, life is good again, okay? And we're singing again, okay? And then he takes you to your body, you go pit here, and nobody's looking, he drops you in. Yeah. <laughs> and acts like you didn't fall. Wow. Or he pushed you. He started doing the same thing all over again. That's what Israel did. Every time he took them to an adventure, they bellyate. Yeah. They cried to him, is the Lord among us or not? Every time. And he said, they saw my works and never saw my ways. Oh, Didn't know where I was. Until he got into trouble. And he cried to me and that got out of trouble. And you, you figured, well, when this was a problem, and he opened it. I'd have been good to go with God from then on. I'll tell you the truth. I'd be over the Whatever he do next in that trip, I'm going to just chill out and see what he's going to do. Watch the adventure and enjoy the ride. That's why I'm going to enjoy the ride. You know, I mean, what, what would it have been like to watch the world see open up? They just look at us walk through. <laughs> you realize the mud is not sinking? There is no mud. You watch the fish, and the great white comes up to you to like a bunch of aquarium, and you can only go so far that the water's moving. And then you're going to get, it's like you're scared to death, and it's like, you know what? I can enjoy this one. It's like a big aquarium. Did <laughs> you walk through? Yeah. A big walk through aquarium. You talk to him, look, look at those fish here. You forgot the fact you're about to get killed. He's got you in an adventure land. Enjoy the ride. You come up the Red Sea, next problem you have, water problem. This time, too much, this time, none. What do you do? Well, let's see what going to do this time. It's like nothing moves. You get a bad popcorn, and you watch God do what he does. How's it going, what's it going to do? How's it going to give water for all of our cattle and flock and 600,000 men plus women and children? And we're in the wilderness. There's no water, there are no lakes, no rivers. And he sit back and enjoy it. Because he's going to do it because he made a promise. Yes. He promised the land. He got to get me there. How he does it, don't worry about it. He said, follow me. I got a plan. I ain't going to tell you all the details. But I'll take you to Canaan because I promised it. And so I can't let you die or drown or whatever in the wilderness because I got a promise in line. And I keep my promises. And so it becomes an adventure. And so he sit back and say, well, I want to see what's going on. Go to your friends and I think I'll I think I'll go with the sign. You know, ask, you know, do you think that's gonna, you know, we're gonna die of thirst? 
And they say, no, this is going to come. Let's see what God does on this one. And shut us up the Red Sea. That's a big deal. This has got to be a bigger one. Let's watch. And you're thirsty. And your tongue has gone thick. And you can't even swallow. You think you're going to die. But you know I can't. Because I made a promise. So he's taking me through. Okay, Lord. I'm there for the ride. I'm there for the duration. You tell God that it's okay. Enough of that test. And he moves you on. The test ends quicker if you give in to it. You can pass it. It's like a like one of those kind of self paced a self paced course. You can pass it quickly, graduate, or you know you can take weeks and weeks and weeks to get the certificate. I remember God just you just you stuck out for this is good guy. How you gonna get the water out? Doing that, God says it's not gonna phase me. I'm gonna still walk with Him and still follow Him and not complain or anything. And just wait for His His promise to get these okay Moses. Go ahead and speak to this rock. Mm. So, you get excited and you watch this. You say, don't want to go talk to the rock just now. And come on, let's go. You're, you're, you're the rock. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be there. Mm -hmm. And Moses says, go speak to the rock. And all of a sudden, shh, out of this rock of flint, water from gushing out, and water the whole congregation. So that was cool. Mm. <laughs> And God says to the next adventure, y'all. The thirsty take care of now, you got canteen full of water, everything is fine, and happy days are here again, and welcome to the Lord. Thank God I'm gonna take care of it. Lord, you just kick me over, yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm sure we're gonna wait over there to see it and I come and pick it back up. It's going from one adventure to another. Let's say this and all these things that happen to our for our example. We should give God the least amount of problem to anybody, because we know the road, we know his ways. You know how he does things. He puts you to a mess and delivers you. Doing what? Testing your faith. To get the point that, Lord, look, I'm tired of the drills. I'm tired of going through stuff. Okay? Now, I'm going to be with you forever. I'm going to follow you through whatever. I'm here for the duration. I'll die in this. <coughs> he says, okay. Because I'll bless you, man. Because you weren't excited to come be with me. That's what God does. He told Abraham, offer, offer, offer your only son, whom you love. And so Abraham took his son, and Sarah said, when are you all coming back? You'll be back in three days. He was going to kill Isaac. Oh, he's going to kill Isaac. Absolutely. And so at this point, walking with God, he staggered not the promise of God, which means that he didn't go through this kind of stuff and have the promise of God knock him back on his heels and God made a demand from him. He just said, okay. Took Isaac, got the wood and the fire thing, and got Isaac there and tied him up. He was going to kill him. And God said, now I know where your heart's at, and never mind. I got something else for you. Let God take you to the limit. Because he has to keep his promise. I could just quit here, but I have my bone. It's like one more scripture. Jeremiah. Well, he's going to heal you guys. Amen. I know that. Down and down. He may do it on the way home. He may do it tonight. He's going to do it when he gets ready to do it. But he's not, not doing it because he's just not done doing it. He's not doing that to do something else. He's doing something else. And that's what's man with the whole congregation. That's right. He's trying to get to bear one of those burdens. Yes. And he's had to do it. Everything we're not there yet. Hmm. Well, I fast now. I'm just about an hour. And let me pray for these two guys as if it's your lady. That's right. As if it's your back. Because if you prayed for somebody's back as if it's yours. Mm -hmm. Robert come one day last week. He said, and I told Pastor, which I really appreciate it. So I thought people had to pray for me, they never hear a report. He said, tell Pastor, my back now is this. And I'm, I'm feeling real good. And I'm not so happy. But Robert, what Robert didn't know is that that day, I was like this. I never had a back problem. I was bent over. I was hoping God had taken me seriously. I said, you can take it off of him and put it on me. I can't even care, but not really. <laughs> See, because the first time since I've been knowing Robert almost he says he's feeling good, and I got a back problem. <laughs> this is not good. <laughs> I told God, it's not going to look, look good on your resume. <laughs> I got to preach tomorrow. Yes, I know. Let's be preaching today. 
Okay. <laughs> Jeremiah 12. <clears throat> Keep praying. Amen. So the Lord said, well, I, I thought that with the service, and I'm going to answer them, and I'm just going to do it. He said, I'll tell you that. I said, no, but wouldn't that be good and maybe good? He said, for you, maybe. He said, that's not my plan. I said, okay. He said, well, all right then. All right, Matt Rose. <laughs> all right. Well, verse 5. If thou hast run with my footmen, and they have weary thee, then how canst thou contend with horses? And if in the land of peace, wherein thou trustest, they weary thee, then how wilt thou do in the swelling of Jordan? He said, right now, we're not even running the footmen yet. Right now, he's just prepared us to run. So run. Because he's going to bring the footmen in. I mean, he, he, he told you it's going to be 10 days. It's going to be a tough 10 days.